Well, I've always been fascinated with the Exodus story um, because it's a, it's a macrocosm of how the Lord deals with us today. And what I mean is that the Lord dealt with an entire nation of people the same way he deals with us as individuals and us as a church today. So the last time we talked about this story, it was how through faith that we can enter in to the promised land with the best will for our lives and for our church. Um, and today, we're going to look at uh, one of the roadblocks that comes up. So before we can enter into the promised land, we, all, we have some obstacles to overcome. And some obstacles we all have to overcome. And what delayed God's people from entering in the promised land uh, in due time was the power of words. So words are very powerful. Words are so powerful they can accuse or they can encourage. They can make us laugh or they can make us cry. Words can bring healing or they can bring hurt. Words can teach us truth or they teach us lies. Words can bless or words can curse. Words can use for gossip or to stop gossip. Your words will bring you victory in your life or defeat. Now the enemy works very diligently in the area of words. If he can keep us negative and destructive words coming out of our mouths, he knows that it will destroy our futures. Now the opposite is also true. If we can speak positive and creative words, it will create great futures for us. And the Bible gives much instruction about the power of words. In Proverbs it says, A man's self shall be filled with the fruit of his mouth, and with the consequence of his words, he must be satisfied, whether good or bad. That means the words that we speak in our life shape our futures. And the Bible says we have to be happy with it or satisfied with it, whether it's good or bad. So we use our own words to create this. And the next verse says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they who indulge it shall eat the fruit thereof. So with our words, we can create life and health and happiness. And likewise, with our other words, we can bring in death, destruction, and decay. So the last time we talked about shaping our futures through faith. And today I want to focus on what can get the children of God into trouble more than we can imagine. That's what got children of Israel in trouble. I want to talk about the dangers of murmuring and complaining. Now I know that none of us have this problem. I know that this lesson is for someone else. So if you listen, maybe you'll be able to help that person. So why do we complain? Well, there's a few reasons why we as people and Israel complain. People really haven't changed. Uh, we thought uh, that something would make us happy and it fell short of our expectations or that we are jealous that someone else got something that we thought we deserved or someone did something that we didn't like. But <clears throat> it really boils down to one thing. And the truth is, we didn't get what we wanted when we wanted it. Another way you can say that is you're not grateful. Now, if we're honest, we can all admit we've been guilty of murmuring and complaining. And it's sometimes it's comical what we complain about. We ask God to give us a promotion at work, and then we complain we have too much responsibilities. We ask God to give us more business, and then complain we're swamped. We ask God to give us children, we complain when they misbehave. We ask God for a new car, we complain how far we have to drive. We ask God for a husband or wife, and we complain when they do something we don't like. <laughs> so, there was this wise man, and these people were coming to this wise man every day, and they were complaining about the same problems. And the wise man is sitting there listening. And so one day, he tells this joke, and everybody just roars in laughter. He waits a couple more minutes, and then he tells the same joke again. And a couple people chuckle. And he waits another couple minutes and tells the same joke again, and nobody laughs. And he said, you can't laugh at the same joke over and over again. So why do you keep complaining about the same problems? 
because there will always be something to complain about. We live in an imperfect world, and it's filled with imperfect people. And I know that means we have an imperfect church. But the enemy will make certain that we always find something to complain about. So the children of Israel, Israel, they were in bondage. And the Lord heard their cries, and he sends Moses in to help lead them out of the way, out of Egypt. And the children of Israel see the most awesome display of God's power ever witnessed in the history of mankind. I mean, Jesus did a lot of things, but his were personal miracles. God's power was on display for all to see in unbelievable ways. But were they thankful? Literally, the first thing that they did after they come out of Egypt, and they get showered with gifts and treasures. They get up to the uh, Red Sea like, what you do? You let us out here to die? Because a complainer will always have something to complain about. God can do miracle after miracle for us. And if we allow the enemy to have his way, we will only see all the negative and what is wrong instead of seeing what is right. <coughs> we can always find something to complain about, even in the midst of continuous miracles. The Israelites saw unbelievable miracles, yet they still could not believe that God was watching them. And the main reason for murmuring and complaining is that we are simply not grateful. I think about my life, uh, when I complain and murmur, I'm focusing on the negative. And now, uh, we all have like a go-to problem, or a go-to person to complain to, and mine was my dad. So, during a particular time, there was this issue, and I went over course of a couple days, and I kept complaining about this and that, blah, blah, blah. and about the second day in, he was like, you're always complaining. And I said, well, you're the only person I complain to. <laughs> but that bothered me. And don't get me wrong, at the time I felt that I had every right to be upset. But I realized I didn't want to be that person. And it really wasn't fair to my dad to have to listen to me complain. And even though I felt that I was right, I had forgot the words of the psalmist. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. So, us, much like the children of Israel, have to be careful what we complain about. And to be careful what they ask for. Children of Israel were complaining about food, so God gives them this stuff called manna. Some kind of coriander kind of bread thing, and they were eating this manna, and after a little little time, they got tired of manna, and then they had some cooking competitions to see who came up with the most creative ways for manna. So they had manna burgers and manna waffles and manna, you know, pancakes and manna souffle. They made it all the different ways that they possibly could, and they got a little tired of it. And they said, "Oh, for a few bites of meat, that we had such delicious food back in Egypt. We had." melons and leeks and onions and garlic. That was so great back there. <laughs> then Moses heard everybody in their own tent complaining about it. And it says the Lord became angry. Well, it says exceedingly angry. And Moses got worried. And so he said, God said to tell Moses, tell the people to get themselves ready. You they want meat, you're going to have yourself some meat. Because I've heard all your tearful complaints about everything you left behind in Egypt. I'm going to give you some meat, and you are going to eat it. Now, who here has got a hunger in for a big juicy steak? It's me. All right. So, not that long ago, um, I don't eat beef very often, but we both got in a mood for a big juicy steak. And so, I knew we were going to go out and get one. And, I didn't eat much that day because I really wanted to enjoy this big meal that I knew I was going to have. So, I get there and have the tires and drinks and get a big steak and sides and all that. And I take the bite of the first bite of that steak and oh my goodness, big old ribeye. So good, so delicious and juicy. And as I start eating, 
and I get towards the end of it, I'm really full, but I don't want to waste <laughs> this beautiful piece of meat that I had ordered. So I'm trying to hunker down and finish this stuff, and as I get to the end, I just yawn, just barely even chew it, and it doesn't even taste good to me anymore. <laughs> and that's what happened with the children of God. Number says, you guys want some meat, children of Israel? I'll give you some meat, but you're not going to get meat for just one day or two days. And they're like, okay. He's like, you're not even going to get it for five or ten days. And I'm like, you're like, not even 20. But for one whole month, you shall have meat. So much so until you vomit it out your nose. Because you have rejected the Lord who is here among you. And you have wept to go back to Egypt. Murmuring and complaining turns the favor of God away from us. The Lord sees our complaining as a direct rejection of him. And it is. He says, he sees us our being grateful for not being grateful for all that he has done. And he takes murmuring and complaining very, very personally. God loves us and he wants to do for us. He wants to do miracles in our lives. But it disappoints and upsets the Lord when we murmur and complain. He wants to take each of us into our promised land. A thing, if not the main thing, that will totally stopping us from entering in is complaining. But turn that around and be thankful and grateful and positive for all that he has done, and he will get you to your promised land quickly. Because the longer you complain, the longer you will remain in that situation. The children of Israel complained about having eaten manna. Do you know how long they ended up eating it for? Forty years! I can't even imagine eating the same thing for 40 years. Deuteronomy 1 tells us it takes about 11 days to get from Mount Sinai to the Promised Land. They could have been done with manna in 11 days. That's why we should not give voice to our complaints. Because our words have power. Not let the devil run away with your blessings. The enemy wants us to speak and verbalize how bad things are and how afraid we are. But if we make that mistake, the devil will trap us in the wilderness until we stop complaining or we die. Now this is an amazing fact that a lot of people miss the real reason why the, that generation of Israel was kept out of the promised land. Um, many people kind of stop at the 12 spies report and the Bible says it was an evil report. The 12 spies come back and 10 of them say... Giants over there, we can't go over there. And the two are like, we got this, we got this. I mean, meanwhile, it took two guys to carry like a cluster of grapes. So it puts a new definition. I know when I have grapes, I need like a bowl of them. Back then, you just like, give me a grape and I'm good. It's like this big. <laughs> but it's what God's people did after they got that report that kept them out of the promised land. It says, all of them wept and cried all night. And the people complained, oh, that we died in Egypt. And Numbers 14 says it. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, saying, How long shall I bear with this evil congregation which murmur against me? I have heard all the murmurings of the children of Israel, which they murmur against me, and to say unto them, As surely as I live, saith the Lord, as you have spoken in my ears, I will do to you. Your carcasses shall fall in the wilderness, all of you that were numbered, according to your whole number, from twenty years on and upward. Who have murmured against me. That's what kept them out of the promised land. It wasn't the spies report. It was what they did afterwards. And instead of entering in. To what they should have been. A quick 11 day journey. Because of their words. And their response. They wandered around for 40 years. Until that entire generation died off. Now don't you think the same. Applies to us today. Same applies to the man of God. Same applies to the church of God. preaching on the metal. Now, some of you have been dealt with seems to be an unfair handed life. Maybe a mate walked out on you. Maybe someone is treating you very wrongly right now. Maybe you've been diagnosed with a life-threatening disease. Or maybe you have recently lost a loved one and are in great pain. But the, you might have every reason in this natural world to complain. But don't do it. Let me encourage you. 
as difficult as it may be, bite your tongue. Do not allow any unwholesome talk to come out of your mouth. Unwholesome talk will keep you in that very wilderness that you are in. Proverbs 30 tells us, if you've done anything foolish and exalting yourself, or you have thought any evil thought, lay your hand upon your mouth. Right. And what he's saying is, as bad as it was to think it, or even do it, don't talk about it. Right. No matter how things, how bad things get, do not murmur and do not complain. Because we know how bad it got for Jesus. Isaiah tells us, he was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to slaughter, as sheep before the shearers is silent. So he did not open his mouth. Jesus went through more than we could ever even imagine, yet he never complained. I mean, imagine the beating, the crown of thorns, ripping out the beard, having to carry the cross on your mangled back all the way up, getting nailed in your hands and your feet. We need to learn to do the same thing that Jesus did in our difficult times. We must learn to stay silent. You will have circumstances in your life that do not seem fair. That you may not understand why some bad things are happening. If you want to be raised up, you must trust in God on our mountains and in our valleys. We cannot say anything good. God has promised that he would take these things in your life, these crazy things, these shameful things, humiliating things, and turn them around into something good and bless you doubly. Isaiah also tells us, instead of shame and honor and dishonor, you shall have a double portion and everlasting joy. Amen. If we do what is right when we go through bad times, even if it was shameful or disgraceful, God has promised that he would bring us out with a double portion of prosperity and a double portion of joy. I want to challenge you today. Murmuring and complaining is destructive. Every time you are tempted to complain, allow that to be a reminder to thank God instead. Thank God for something that he has done for you. Give someone the right to tell you, if you hear me complain, tell me. God will bless you more if you do not murmur and do not complain. Because as we learn from the children of Israel, bad things will happen if we murmur and that children of Israel never learned this principle, and sadly, a lot of Christians don't learn it either. That generation always found fault in something. If it wasn't about the food, it was about the water. If it wasn't about water, it was about Moses. If it wasn't about Moses, it was about Moses' wife. If it wasn't about Moses' wife, it was about God himself. And Numbers also tells us they began to murmur against God and to complain against Moses. Why have you brought us out of Egypt to die here in the wilderness, they whined. There's nothing to eat here and nothing to drink, and we hate this manna. They hated the blessings and miracles from the Lord. And so the Lord sent poisonous snakes among them to punish them, and many were bitten and died. God became so tired of their attitude that he pulled back his hand of protection upon them. And the Apostle Paul refers back to this incident in 1 Corinthians. We should not tempt the Lord as some of them did. And they were killed by poisonous snakes. Who were discontently complained as some of them did. And were put out of the way entirely by the destroyer. Hear what that says? You can be put out of the way by complaining. You can walk away from God. You can walk away from church. You can walk away from this whole thing by this one action. When we murmur and complain... The Lord backs off. His presence will not remain around a murmuring, complaining people. He will open the door to poisonous snakes. And we will poison our own futures. When we constantly are negative and constantly finding fault with something, we're opening the door for bad things to come into your camp, into your life, into your family. We will release the poison into our homes, into our bodies, into our work, into our businesses, into everything that is about us. But the opposite is also true. If we remain positive and we keep our hearts cheerful and thankful, it is like good medicine. The proverb says, a merry heart does good like a medicine, but a broken spirit dieth up the bones. It should have taken the children of Israel 11 days 
to reach that next higher plane in their life. Instead, most of them never entered it at all. Most of them died in the wilderness. Why? The problem was their mouth. They were constantly murmuring and complaining. God says, come and follow me. It's just a short journey down the road, and I will bless your life to where you shine like the stars in the heavens. Just don't murmur and complain. Philippians tells us, do everything without complaining or arguing, so that you may become blameless and pure, children of God without fault in a crooked and depraved generation in which you shine like the stars in the heavens. We all like that part. <laughs> yeah, who, who doesn't want to shine like a star in heaven? Whose life, who, what person doesn't want their light to be so bright that it shines in the darkness? <clears throat> that sounds great. I want that too. Oh, we just have to do everything without complaining. There's a formula. It's a recipe. You want to shine bright? Right. And so how many, how many things does the Bible say to do with, without complaining? <laughs> everything. That's hard, man. <laughs> it is. I was, uh, I don't say what it was, but someone asked me to do something. I did not want to do it. And I was like, okay, let's do it. And I, and I had to work really, really hard to not complain. Because I wanted to. I didn't want to do it. A bunch of reasons. I had like 10, 15 reasons why I didn't want to do it. But I had to discipline myself like, no, I'm not going to complain. I'm not. I'm going to go, and I'm going to do this thing. And then when I ended up going and doing it, it was nothing but I, I, I built it up way more in my mind. It was not uh, bad at all. <laughs> Maybe that's because I didn't complain. I don't know. But since they're not in here, um, Olivia and Isabel are very different personalities. Um, Isabel likes everything to be just so and just tidy. She usually cleans up her room every once in a while and say, oh, go clean up your room. There's a couple of things and she puts it away. And Olivia is a little different. Um, she likes to have all her toys. She likes to pull them all out and have them all there on the floor. And then when she leaves and comes back, they're all still right there so she knows exactly where they all are. And I'll tell her, okay, Olivia, go clean your room. And I already know what's coming. It's going to be all oh, tearful and and complaining, she'll just saw up around. She doesn't mind cleaning up anybody. Else. We'll, we'll clean up, hey, everybody come, clean up the room. This, this is fine. Say the word Olivia clean and room, and it's just, it's all over. And <laughs> now I still make her do it, um, but every once in a while, I don't feel like getting into it with her. And I say, Isabel, why don't you go clean Olivia's room? And she's like, but I didn't make this mess. <laughs> I know, I said, but I'm going to bless you uh, more because you do. And that's the way God works with his children. Is we say, you know what, I already know this person. They're going to complain and murmur if they're asked to do something. You know what, I'm just going to go ahead and ask this, this person, this person, this person. They'll do it without complaining. And you know what, I'm going to bless their lives. Even more. So stop complaining about working overtime or the grocery store. Or mowing the lawn or fixing the car or for me shoveling the driveway of snow. Instead, thank God that we have the opportunity to even have the strength and help and life to do these things. If we stop murmuring and complaining, God will bless our lives so much that we will appear like the stars in the heavens. And He will elevate us to a higher dimension in life than we had ever thought possible. And I want to challenge you to do all things. Without murmuring and complaining. Can't say anything good? Zip it! The longer, the longer, you know, you gotta make a decision. It, it has to be a conscious decision in your mind that you will not do it. And you have to realize that the longer you murmur and complain, the longer you will stay in that wilderness that is in your life. If you refuse to murmur and complain, God will roll away the stones in your life and raise you up. Be a grateful person. Enter into that promised land. Enter into that next step in your life. Thank God for all that he does in your life. And God will bless you and give you the bright life that you deserve. Uh, as uh, pastor's going to come, I just want us to take a minute and thank the Lord for his blessings. Lord, thank
Thank you for allowing me to be born on this earth. But thank you for Lord, being born at this time of relative ease and so many comforts that we have. Thank you for allowing me to be born in the United States, where we are free to come and worship you. Lord, thank you for allowing me to be born into a family that taught me about your love and mercy. Lord, thank you for allowing me a roof over my head, clothes on my body, food in my tummy. Lord, thank you for this church. Thank you for this people of God that come together to worship you. Thank you for your love and for your mercy and all the things that you do for us, most of which we will never even know in this life. You are so merciful and so good, O oh, Heavenly Father. Oh, I thank you so much. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for never changing. Thank you for always being the same. Thank you for showing us a way, giving us an option to where you can restore us, bring us into your home, and be with you forever. I thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name.